Okay, my friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, studying the earth, the climate, and what is changing, and it is not good. And uh, my contention here, and I will show the evidence to support what I say, is that they, not any other scientist, not a single one of them, understands what is causing global warming. I will show you right now, and I think I have a solution. I'm not just bringing up why it is happening and this and that. I think I have a way to fix this. Okay, I'm just going to give you a real quick taste of what you are about to see, and will blow your mind. This is green laser light. That is the particle. These are the explosive portions. This is the dark matter. That happens in green. It happens in red. It happens for all light. Now, the green ones are right here. I mean, the red ones are right here. Same thing. You see? Now, what happens is as they come out, they come in sort of a little blobby looking stuff. You really can't see anything. But just before they hit the Venturi, which is right here, which is the explosive white concussive area, which separates those particles, you, they start to show. You see it? It shows here. They start to show up here, show up here, and then they explode into just bombness. All right, now, when they explode, the particles themselves literally separate. And here they are separating from the black portion which we saw attached to the white. Now they are separated. In this area right here, I believe we can harvest free energy. Let us dig a little deeper. This is just a taste so you can understand light accelerates. Well, let's just go right through, quick through it again. I'm, we're going to go deeper, so don't worry red pulse laser, accelerating red laser, the particle that is in the red laser, concussion, which is electron showers, electron showers coming at us, which is nothing more than Higgs fields. So, let's go. Okay, my friends, the first thing you're going to have to do is forget everything you've been told about atoms and molecules and electrons. All right, just forget it. For, drop it, forget it, it's all wrong in my world. Now, what, in, what is my world? I live in an electron flooded world. And that means there is nothing that exists, nothing that is not made out of this basic particle, which is an electron. And you say, Roger, why does it have two poles? And I say, because an electron holds the dark matter they've been looking for. They never knew where it was. It was stuck to the electron. It doesn't do anything other than pull that electron back. But this is the electron. They call it a fermion, electron neutrino. It explodes and causes white showers of electrons. I'm going to show it to you. This one just gets out of the way. But they are originally attached. I will show it to you. When they are in a molecular form instead of light or electrons, when they are in molecules, all of these things go together, but they still, always, 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 100% of everything there is, is coated with the, the explosive portion. That means everything will push to shove. If I bring anything against that, when I get right up against the close, it's called the Casimir effect. When I get right up against that, that electron will push this electron away, because this is coated with electrons too. There's nothing that's not coated with electrons. So, let's get into this. So, atoms and molecules always have 100% fermions on their surface, just like a magnet, because Every single molecule, an atom, really, is nothing more than a little magnetic ball that is coated with a valence shell of electrons. And, and then once you get into the atom, this is nothing more than electrons. And then they say it's coated with a shell of valence electrons. Say, well, obviously, because there's nothing but electrons. <laughs> First, let me explain that CERN and all of the JPL and Fermi Lab, all they, they know these things exist. The muon and the electron showers, when you have high voltage, high-powered particles coming in, which is what they do when they crash these 
a large hadron collider. Then they find a bunch of garbage. And they have seen these, which they think is the smallest particle there is, and they know it doesn't concuss, it doesn't do anything. They call it a muon. I call it dark matter. And they've seen these, which are electron neutrinos, they call them the showers. They don't think they're the same particles together. They are the same particles attached together. I don't think they, th they know that. Uh, I've never heard anybody say they know that. Now, I know that. I know they're attached together. You just saw them attached together. Now we're going to see them in red lasers, same stuff, same particles, and then we're going to see them separate. All right, this is the red laser light, and this is the red laser light accelerating. That's the red laser particle, same as a green, but it's only a little less concussive, less, less aggressive. And this is the particle being pulled from the wave, just like a jet fighter crashing through the sound barrier and getting ahead of the wave, which is just what this particle did. So we know it's a particle, we know it accelerates, we know it has mass because it explodes when it concusses here. And what happens to that mass is this. This is what happens to that mass. And that mass is nothing more than one of the particles, every one of those electrons, which was a back-to-back -back white and black ball, is one particle of electron flood theory. Where is my chart? Anyway, don't worry about that for now. Electron flood theory says there is nothing but electrons, and if you've made all these batches together in 1837, it's a proton. I think I probably went over that. Now, the black ball has separated from the white. If we can harvest this right here by putting some form of a harvest plate here, before that white attaches back to its black, we know that there is an enormous increase in energy here. Enormous. And there's no moving parts. It's just to a venturi. It's just an accidental uh, discovery. And it, it, it could change everything that there is. Because I can see that the dark matter particle, the muon, the boson, whatever they want to make, term it, has a, walked away from the fermion or electron shower or electron neutrino or whatever they want to call that. So they completely can separate. That is the key. There's a, I know there's something we can do here, and I know that we can use this energy and we can stop destroying the earth, this fracking of the earth. The earth, I'm going to tell you right now, is literally a living creature. It is living and eating these electrons. I'm starting to understand the entire ball of wax, and it is a ball of wax that you are just not going to even ever be able to believe until you really dig deep into mud fossils. That's how I came up with this whole thing. And I realized that, that anything that was an annoyance to academia, which means it, it goes against somebody's little pet idea that they had and, and made them famous or gave them a book or made them a professor or something, and they, they don't want to hear anything different. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. And that is a fact. I don't care what anybody says to me. I understand. I know. You will never, ever, ever convince me that that is not true because it is a fact and it is a disgrace and it destroys science and it destroys education, forces kids to regurgitate what they're told to say. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong and they don't care. I know they don't care because I've been forcing mud fossil truth on every top university in the world. Not one will respond. That tells me all I need to know. All right, I'm going to try to make this as gentle as I can, but it's not going to be pleasant. All right, here's what we got. I just I told you, we're scrubbing through space. Electrons are being forced, and I can prove this. There's no question about it. Electric discharge comes in, like I think it's like 50 times a second around the Earth. Lightning is striking down through these zones of different layers of the atmosphere. And how can I say there's layers of the atmosphere? If you set off an atomic bomb, you'll see a white shot, and another white one, and another white one will come up. Those are the layers, and as the electrons go up through them, they vaporize the layer zone, which will be electron to electron. They'll be cre create an electron to electron, electron to electron, electron. It's push to shove. Now, our bomb going off this way, we have the same thing coming this way, and it's, instead of pushing electrons out, it's pushing electrons in. And they are electrons, and they are coming in. Now, 
then I had that really upset me <laughs> because every time we accept an electron that's just heat in my world as I was thinking about it electrons are nothing but heat you turn the heat on it's nothing but forcing more electrons in and and creating more electrons in the air and as they flow out it gets cold it's, it's really very very simple and that is true and that's exactly what it is however absorbing these electrons so in other words we got electric discharge electric discharge, discharge then the earth sucks that electron in the earth sucks electrons it is the earth sucks now in many ways but in this electron way <laughs> it sucks electrons in now why can I prove that? Because out here it's push to shove. See these electrons are pushing in, these electrons are pushing back. So it's push to shove, it builds up, discharges, push to shove, builds up, discharges, push to shove, push to shove. And these are all 6.5 hertz. Then you get to the earth and it says, hey come on down here, I'll take you. So instead of pushing back, instead of being 6.5 squished, it <laughs> It pulls it down to the earth and sucks that electron in, making your magnetic field circulating around. Because we're this is a generator. It's an electric generator. That's all it is. It's ex identical to a generator. And I have shown this with little motors. You take an electric motor, you spin it by hand, and it will create electricity. It becomes a generator. If you put electricity into it, it becomes a motor. Well, we are a generator. We are spinning with our magnetic particles, just like the, the armature of a motor, through the magnetic particles in space, which is the stator of a motor. And that armature stator, crush to push to shove, the crush to push, pushes electrons. And they are pushing them into our earth and creating our magnetic field. It's not the iron core. Iron core, is, you know, there is no iron core. I mean, there might be. I don't care about the iron core if there is or not. It's not, not. That's not what's creating our magnetic field. Everything is just so guess-oriented and was so completely wrong. And I think it was made wrong by the CIA and people like that so that nobody could understand science so they could make be better bombs and nobody else could make this equal bombs. I'm telling you, that's what I feel now is the truth of our history. is nothing but a bunch of lies by people that wanted to do things that Anyway, that's a whole other issue. I get off on these things. <laughs> now, so we're in trouble if this was correct, that these electrons keep forcing their way in, if that's all it is is heat. Now, is that all it is is heat? I started to think about that, and I said, well, Roger, I don't know, buddy. This is not going to be good. It ain't going to last for much longer at all if that's the case. However, then I started to think, well, well where do those electrons go if they once they stop being heat? If they're heat, are they just going to always be heat? They're going to move from this place to that place, or are they going to become less energetic? And I started to think, as life develops, it needs electrons to develop. And they use those electrons to literally create their own molecules. Because everything is built from electrons. So if you can take these electrons and then the life on Earth says, okay, I can, I can use some of those electrons to, it's stuff called ATP and, you know, but you use, everything creates electrons in your body to, for energy. That's your energy. Now, they also end up making into molecules to create the structure of your body. So, uh, is this the food? For the, the, the earth, if it is, that's fine. But we're getting so fat, we're going to explode. If that's the key, and I believe it is, this is literally now, I'm starting to think this is the food that should we should eat just the right amount of food. Well, we are taking food from inside of our earth and regurgitating it out into this environment and creating so much energetic, reactive violence it all, everything's melting, the earth is being pushed back. Instead it's supposed to be pushing nice and freely and everything, and there's just enough coming at it so that everything works good. Well, all of a sudden we blew this thing up real hard, put a whole ton of extra electrons out, zillions of extra electrons. Well, what's it going to do? It's going to push harder. What's that going to do? It's going to create more heat. It's going to create more discharges. It's going to create more 
global warming. That is the case. And then you say, well, Roger, big deal. So what? There's nothing we can do. And I say, yeah, well, there is something we can do. We can start to think a little bit. And maybe we can separate the explosive part from the attractive part. This is gravity. The black part is gravity. It sucks these white balls to them. These are what's called electron showers, electron neutrinos. These are called muons. I call them dark matter because nobody ever knew these existed before. Nobody knew. They knew they, these particles existed, but they had no clue they were attached together. And that is the dark matter that attaches to the electron. The electron does the, all the work. and That's all we ever thought there was in electricity. No. It is also attached to the dark matter. Now, the dark matter we can separate, and here it is separating. All right, and if you don't think the Earth is alive, is not alive, come up here and see. that I did this over five years ago. The Earth is alive, completely living and in trouble. And even down here at the end, when they're going through this dive, you can see the coral. This is where the, the Earth is literally pooping. Our mother is eating. Shoulder, this, and it's even deeper than that. That's the poop. This is a layer of decomposing leaves and other organic stuff. The decomposition creates hydrogen sulfide, a deadly gas that juice. smells like rotting eggs. The water is saturated with hydrogen. Check out the mucus what from you're mucus here are the decomposing remains of forest vegetation which have passed entirely through the caves and out into the ocean. You know what caves are. Caves are digestive systems. I am sorry, that is a fact. And what this is doing is pooping out into the ocean. The Earth was alive. I don't know how much longer it's going to last. Everywhere I find to me. it looks like strands of mucus floating in the water. Same it's stuff in ours. It's mucus secreted by the coral in response to the caustic hydrogen sulfide. No, it isn't. It's stuck on everything, including this gorgonian, which has closed all its polyps to protect itself from the hydrogen sulfide. As the tide carries the toxic water away, the corals will go back to normal. That's exactly what happens in your digestive system. If you have the correct bacteria in you, so that when the toxic stuff comes by, you can create mucus to cover your little polyps, then you are protected. If you don't have the right good bacteria in your digestive system and all of your membranes, they will be attacked and it will kill you and you will have coral reef destruction. It's almost identical. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 cancer is just like a coral reef dying. It's time to start paying attention to what's really around us. This is mucus. It's poop. The earth was alive and we are destroying it. This fracking is fracking crazy. Okay, I did a whole series of, of videos about the health of Mother Earth. I said bubbly, bubbling hydrogen sinkholes, the health of Mother Earth. I worked with the Russians about their sinkholes and they were as nice as anybody that, that I have ever worked with, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I got eight comments on this video. This was over five years ago. I, I put out, oh, I don't know, half a dozen or more. At the same time, showing all of the evidence that supports the fact that the Earth is being destroyed and we're the ones that are destroying it. We needed to figure a way, and nobody cared a damn bit. 